So a lot of folks come to Mexico on a vacation and end up buying a timeshare, very common. We ended up buying a house when we came down. But it's possible to move from a timeshare of owning just a week in Mexico to owning an entire life in Mexico. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. I'm gonna be meeting with Larry. This is his place here. This is Casa Tucan, and we'll talk about that. And he has a timeshare here in San Jose del Cabo. And now he has this house here in Cabo Pomo or the East Cape. And it's gorgeous, so I wanna talk a little bit about you know the difference between timeshare living and owning a house, and maybe if you're one of those timeshare owners, you'll see how you could make the transition to full-time life in Mexico. So let's start out with meeting Larry, and uh, at some point we'll meet his wife, Roz, and he'll tell us about his journey from timeshare to full-timer, and also a little bit about his house here. It's an off-grid house, and maybe a little bit about just kind of what his life is like here now that he's a full-timer in Mexico. Well, my first trip to Mexico was uh, in the winter of 1975. It was snowing in Oregon. And uh, I had two weeks off for Christmas vacation. I asked my buddy Ron, who was also a teacher at the same school, where shall we go? He said, Cabo San Lucas. I said, where in the hell is that? He said, oh, you're gonna like it. So I got in my truck, my camper, and we drove all the way down Oregon to Cabo San Lucas. I went, wow. And, and so Ron will be uh, a recurring a character. He's like a, my brother. And I've uh, been to his wedding, Wedding, weddings, I've been to his pet weddings. He's been to my weddings. Um, and we celebrate our, our children. And so anyway, back to coming down in Mexico, I come down on my, uh, well back in, so in my late 40s, I had a regular job by that time, eight to five job, 52 weeks out of the year, ugh, with a little vacations. So I was coming down and one day I, I rented a, 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 a flat, and Z what nail and it was yuck. And so I went to another flat and it was also yuck. And then I got got introduced to a timeshare presentation. Boy, I go into one and oh wow. It was like air conditioned, the sheets are clean, there's no bugs, no insects. I could do this. So I purchased a, a, a number of them out just to get my feet wet. Every year I'd come back to Mexico. Well, we're in Cabo, San Lucas, and I'm going, you know, I need more time. Getting closer to retirement, age 55, um, I met a beautiful woman at the office where I worked at Oregon. Fell in love. She happened to have a Mexican ancestry. Her father lived in Mexico, and she was a dual citizenship. So we got married, came down, and when I was 60, uh, we had the big party with, with my wife and Ron and a bunch of buddies and bought more 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 weeks. They threw in a Jeep. And so off we got five of us got into the Jeep, drove from Cabo San Lucas up the up the East Cape Road, very rugged, rough, no pavement, all the way to Cabo Pumo, and uh, did our diving and, and beach bathing and just exploring went wow. So went back to the timeshare and we kept coming back every year, Ron and I and my wife and friends. But it needed more. Now that I was retired, I had more time on my hands. I wanted more time down here. So I thought, okay, let's look at some ground. I had to fifth pool up in Oregon. Let's get, get a patch of ground down here, build a palapa roof, put a pelion for water and a pad and, and park it. And, well, lo and behold, we met a, a, an acquaintance, a, a friend of Ron's, who happened to live out here in a house. So we drove out here, and lo and behold, there was a house for sale. So Ron and I, we buy this thing, like you know, without telling our wives, really, we just did it. We needed to name the home, became Casa Toucan. Well, I like to say that it was based upon the two cans of beer that were lying uh, in some horns. We had antlers of, of, of a, or, or horns from a, a bull, a toro, up on, up on the wall with cans of beer plugged in each horn. Well, my wife came down and she saw those two cans and mm -mm, no, we're going to call it Casa Toucan after the bird. So we only had one bird though, because she saw the bird. So we got two birds now. So it's Casa Toucan, uh, spelled a little differently, T-U-C-A-N. Two in Spanish means you, so you can. So Toucan. And uh, so I took her a while. She was still working, so she only spent a few weeks here at a time. I would stay you know, months at a time 
getting this place back in shape. She retired when she was 55, started coming down here. Our original plan was to live here for six months and then go back to US and, and travel. We had a motorhome by that time and we drove, we did do a big trip in 2018 all the way across the United States. So as we went along, we were doing improvements on this property. It kind of, people would want to stay here, but it was kind of ratty down here. It wasn't tip top shape. And so I started working on projects and projects. And then somebody mentioned that let's do a, you should do a timeshare, I'm mean, not timeshare, excuse me, Airbnb. Okay, we start exploring that. Uh, so we put together first the rooms and then we thought we need a kitchen. That used to be a bench over there. If you want to check over there, there's a big bench over there. And we had a man come in and, and re restructure, rebuild it and put the, the tile work in, the stove and the sink and made that outdoor kitchen. Uh, we redid all of this and put, put a new plop and roof up there for a shade structure, for a refrigerator. And then we of course have a bathroom uh, with a nice shower. And then we have two rooms. We call this one the kids' room because we let the kids paint on the wall. If they mess up, you can always repaint the wall, you know. But it's fun. It's a memory for them. And then we have the master room, which is really nice. It's a place where you can just lay there. Uh, our first Airbnb guests came with surfboards and diving gear. I, I shouldn't brag, but it was so nice here. And they're from San Francisco. They were kind of wired. And they get down here, they didn't do any surfing didn't do any diving, he just sat here and chilled out, went to the beach down here and relaxed. So that's what happens when you come out to Casa Tucan or Airbnb, you might just stay here and relax. And and, and Kat and I and Dugget will definitely agree with how relaxing it is. We spent uh, last night here and it is so quiet, no dogs barking, no music, uh, no trucks from the road that we have back at our house in La Paz. So really gorgeous and amazing stars. Just, you know, being out here, the view in the sky at night is really just amazing. But let's get back to Larry and talk about like what life is like out here. We'll talk a little bit more about the house, but let's talk about daily routines as someone who's retired here in the East Cape, I think is what it's called, the East Cape of the Baja Peninsula. Well, every morning I wake up just before the sun pops over the sea of does. And I go straight, I confess, I have to have my coffee. I make some good, strong coffee, a little half and half. And I sit out there and look and gaze into the colors. If there's clouds, the colors are amazing. Be flaming pinks, yellows, gold, purples. And then it fades a little bit. Then in about 15 minutes, it comes back. And then there's a blazing, bold spear just pops. Uh, they talk about the green flash. I have to only see it once out here, but it does happen. And then um, it, it, it just comes out and the sun radiates. And with then once it pops up, I come back down from a second cup of coffee. I have to confess, I had a little Kahlua in the second cup. And then uh, carry on my day, get things wired. I uh, put some clothes on. My dog Tope, she expects to go to the beach every morning. So we have quads and we drive her, she hops in the back of the quad and we drive on down to the beach. We stroll along the beach. Uh, and then when we come back from the stroll, I go for a swim. Sometimes Tope swims with me, not often. Uh, she's not, she's not a, a black lab, but she likes to splash around the water anyway. Because we live in a little isolated community, everybody knows everybody. And so it, it's quite um, frequent you'll meet a neighbor and you'll catch up on the news the latest and uh and then it rotates out because most people come down for the season the, the the winter holidays and then they leave and new folks come in there are a couple of airbnbs out here so you see some strangers but these strangers strangers often just sleep in they don't get up early the locals get up early the, the, and we go to bed early really early so, but we look on the walk on the beach. We do find things. I pick up any garbage I see. That's, that's, we like a clean beach out here. And we respect that. And, and then we find a lot of shells at times. Uh, just interesting things. Sometimes things drift in from, from the sea. This piece right here was drifting in from the sea. And I use it for a doorstop. Because the door comes out, winds sometimes blows through here. So we use that for a doorstop. Anyway, so we get back on the quad. Uh, when it warms up, and, and not only about now, rabbits, conejos, will be all over the place. 
And of course, as my dog, being a, a real dog, um, loves to chase rabbits. So she jumps off the quad and chases a rabbit. But you rabbit lovers out there, don't worry, she's never caught a rabbit. Nope. But she sometimes imitates them. You know how rabbits hop? She starts hopping too. It's amazing to see a hopping dog. <laughs> but it's, it's cute. And then she gets back on the quad panting, of course. And off we go. Unless she sees another rabbit, then she'll take off for that one too. And then eventually we get back. Now, a lot of times she has to be bathed because she's pretty sandy and dirty or dusty. So we have a hose and she knows the routine. She stands on, on, on the stairs and I hose her down. And she stands there. I think she enjoys it. So we get the dog cleaned up, in her back into the house. By that time, my Roz is about my wife Rosalind, who sleeps outside with me and the dog, uh, strolls in the house and uh, get a cup of coffee. And then we um, do a little breakfast. She prefers a different kind of breakfast than I do. She likes the yogurt and the fruit and uh, I think brewer's yeast on top of that and nuts. And anyway, I tend, I'll go with the eggs and the, the beans sometimes. No chorizo. Wife doesn't eat pork. And doesn't like fish, so more for me, I guess. After breakfast, we usually have a lot of work to do around here, which uh, is is a blessing and sometimes a curse. Whereas contrast to the uh, timeshare, when you go there, you just relax. You know, you can order food to your room. You can go down to the pool or the sauna. You sit at the, water, the swim up bar if you like. You can have Blake Mary for breakfast. You can do that. And then there's a little bit of music. And you can stroll over to a restaurant. There's some bakeries pr pretty close by. Uh, go into a coffee house, meet other tourists. You just lay around, you read a book, lay around, visit more people. Uh, evening's always kind of nice to tell them. It comes more lively, there's really live music you know, of a variety of type. Then Thursdays at San Jose, it's Art Walk Night. Wonderful to go to Art Walk. Displays from all over. It's gotten really big now. The streets are closed down, closed off for, for just pedestrians, and it's thousands. So it's gone from from maybe a thousand to uh, four or five thousand. Parking's hard, and, and so it's become a, a different scene. And we still do this. We still go into our timeshare frequently. We need a rest, so we go in. And we're staying there uh, next next in a week. Uh, for a couple nights. So yeah, that description of the timeshare sounds really nice, especially when you're working. Um, because your work, you know, when you come to Mexico, you want to do more relaxing and whatnot. But having a house in Mexico is, is a different thing. It's just, I guess maybe if you have a condo down here, if you are living in a condo, that's maybe a little more like being on vacation, but having a house is a little more work. But also, that can be a good thing, uh, especially if you're retired, is that you've got projects and projects and projects. So let's hear about some of the projects, and let's hear more about the house here, too. Well, when you first come down here, some of the first projects you have to, to really think about is your electricity. And we are on solar. Uh, we're miles away from any grid. So we have our solar, and... Uh, initially, the solar was in bad shape, so we had to renew everything. Got an alabac system, the 80 system, and initially we had 12 batteries, but I finally went in more storage, so we got 16 batteries. So we bought, we went the Gulf batteries. You can get them at, at Costco for about 120 bucks a piece, and guaranteed for uh, two, four years. They at least you last about four years, unless something goes wrong, which we found that out. But to get in your good, strong battery, battery bank, and a good system, and we added more panels too. We, we replaced some older uh, solar panels with new ones, 280 uh, watts. And we added, I think, eight of them or so. We have quite a bit of power coming in, charging the batteries easily in one day. So we have that, but then things can go wrong. So we get the solar dialed in, and then you gotta do the appliances. You need a new stove, you need a new refrigerator, a new washing machine. I, we had a beautiful Maytag old one, and it did quit working. So I tear it apart because I like to use the wash tub for, for a fire ring type thing. And as I'm dismantling the whole thing, I find it has a broken belt. Brother. So it was a great machine. machine. I liked it. had dials that really had dials. None of this push button stuff. And so we go into town. We buy the push button one. And I hook it up and all that. And it doesn't work that good. And our housekeeper needs a, a wash machine. So we can have this one. I went and bought a better one. The Whirlpool. Top the line. 
and it still had some problems. It wouldn't fill all the way up. I couldn't figure out what the heck is wrong. It's just like the other one I just bought. I sure wish it had the old Maytag dog on it. Well, anyway, uh, inadvertently, I, I put the, the, there was a tube, which I, I had uh, the water tube that ex extracts the water out and goes down this pipe. Well, that's a waste of water. So I put the, the pipe down and ran it out with a hose to water my plants, not knowing that then the tub can't fill up. You have to have that hose up above the tub so, you can, so it fills up, and then it goes out that way. That's why they have them up. The heart, that's an expensive lesson to learn. But we now get how it, it, the, the, um, the whirlpool works fine now, by the way. And the plants are doing fine, but I had to raise it up. And then it goes back down. So that's just a trick. Things you learn. Yeah, and a big learning curve out here. I learned a lot about solar panels. Uh, you want to clean them once in a while. <laughs> And then I learned about batteries. You want to add water to your batteries. So they dry, they, they die. And then it's important to have a shut-off switch. So when you leave the home, you shut off the switch to your water pump. We left, came back the next year. Not only were our batteries not working, or we had no, no water, it was gone. And what had happened is that the water pump kept running and running and running, which ran down the batteries. And so, of course, new batteries, Buy a new water pump. And the water pumps ran and ran and ran. What the heck? So I bought a new pressure valve, put that in there. It still kept running and running and running. Well, so it's Larry, there's, there's a one way flow valve for $8. I put that in there. Sure enough, that was the problem. So the learning curves can be very expensive and frustrating and time consuming. I mean, you should be doing air. And that, air, that makes the, the timeshare look really nice. I mean, you just want to go to the timeshare and not worry about all this stuff because that's the most. Another time we came back and we had a big flood down here and our, our, we have a big, the community has a big cistern, I'm gonna call it, a concrete structure. And they fill with water uh, every other day. Water trucks come from uh, a rancho down the road. And well, they bring it up here, dump it in there. And then the gravity fade comes down. Well, we had a uh, major rain and uh, the, water, the road got washed out and the water line broke out too. So the dirt and the sediment goes into the pipe and clogs up the meter. So I had no water coming to the house. So when I came down here, I didn't have any water. I, was, I got the water line fixed, but then I didn't have any water coming to the house because the water meter was all clogged up. So I had to go take out the old water meter, go find, drive around, find another water meter and put that in, of course, and it worked. So every year it seemed to be challenges when you come back. This year we came down, I, I had made arrangements with the local ranch lady to keep the place watered and clean. Well, she had a, a severe illness and could not do, do that. So we came back this year, yeah, we had electricity, we had water, but the place was a mess. We have a plop of house and dirt and dust and, and um, vermin gets dropped in there for mice from some rats and geckos and who knows what else, birds fly in sometimes. Uh, bats come in sometimes. So it was a dirty mess. It had been clean for three months. And our plants had died. So like I say, every year when you're gone, you come back, you expect something to be not quite right. But is it worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. Larry made that sound like that was, you know, a little bit of a burden to deal with this, but I can tell he loves this. He loves, and, and I'm that same way. I love like trying to figure out like, why is there no water in the house? Like our, our cistern like pump got stuck on a root or, you know, the little valve. And so even though it's kind of a pain in the butt and we talk about it, like it's like, oh, it was so hard. It's a lot of fun to fix stuff like that. So if that is you, if you are that person who loves to tinker and fix and kind of troubleshoot, then owning a house in Mexico is great, especially if you're moving from a timeshare. If timeshare living, if you're like, oh, I don't want to have to deal with anything, then maybe your switch to full-time would be better off in a condo. Now, there's no condos out here, and we're, we're in the middle of nowhere here. It's at least an hour of dirt road driving, I think, to get to anywhere. Cabo Pomo is a very tiny little town with some dive shops mostly, and that's just, you know, that's a half an hour away or 25 minutes away. So yeah, you just have to also look at who you are and what it is that you're looking for in life. I mean, living off the grid is cool, but the solar system, we, we just went last night to a place called Tacos and Tacos and Beer, and it was funny. I was listening to uh, a couple of the people talking there, and they're talking about their, I mean, it was actually 
a woman who's like, oh yeah, and my inverter this and my solar panels and you know the wiring and, and whatnot and balancing the batteries. It's definitely a little bit of that rancher style, like Western self-determination kind of like, if that's you, then living somewhere off the grid, it, it definitely is a cool thing. But once again, it's all up to you and who you are. come down in late October and it's luscious green because of all the rain and things are just alive. There's a lot of wildlife, animals, uh, it's happy, green. And then it's warm, extremely warm. It's still, you know, but, but it's in the 80s, you know, it's the mid 80s and it's starting to cool down a little bit each night. In the nighttime, it'd be 65, 70 degrees. And the water, extremely warm. It's, it's almost too warm for me. If I want to swim in the water for a way, it's pretty warm. Uh, my wife, she loves warm water. She just loves that. So if she's happy, I'm, I'll am i get when it cools down a little bit. As the winter comes into uh, November, no, December, it starts to, you know, November is also, November to me is the best month. It's green, it's cool off a little bit. The areas begin to come alive again. It's kind of quiet out here when you come in October. Um, a lot of the snowbirds come down in late November or December, at first year because of, of holidays and family get-togethers. Uh, some will come down here with their families and the families will go return. Uh, but it comes more alive with our friends. You do different, You do have a friendship here with people that come down every year. And it's a, it's a tight friendship, a caring and loving friendship. Uh, but the weather, it gets cooler and cooler. So you go in December, it's getting cooler. And the water is getting cooler. We don't have snow though. No snow, thank goodness. No snow. Uh, we look at our friends up north about December, and they're starting to complain. First, they, oh, it's so pretty to have snow. You're missing out, Larry and Roz. But yeah, 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 okay. But by the time it's February and March, uh, they want to come down here, and sometimes they do. But so January comes along. January's cold. It gets down to our low about 56 degrees. Now we sleep outside. We love the outdoors. We are outside with a tremendous view. The sunrise, of course, pops up. So, uh, but January, it's a bit nippy in February. Uh, this year was particularly so. I, I had to wear jeans. And then the land dries out, becomes brown and browner. And then the animals will go away. Uh, some animal, animals you want to have go away, like snakes. We have um, some nice snakes. We have the rat snakes, the gopher rat, the gopher rat, rat snakes. We do have rattlesnakes. You learn to, to be aware of them. Uh, they tend to hold up in the winter time, and we did find one. My wife found one up in the back inside a dish, like a bowl, but the lid was kind of cr cracked and it got inside there. It was about 10 inches, inches long. We have respect for most life forms, including rattlesnakes. So we had a neighbor come over. He's got a trap, a, a long tube with, a, with a, a, a nylon rope with a loop on it, and he loops around the neck, pulls it up, and drops into a five-gallon plastic bucket with a lid on it, takes it out to an arroyo, uh, a dried up uh, riverbed and leaves it out there. Generally, they're, they're docile, they're in the sun, they're docile, but at nighttime, you get to be a little bit more lurry. I've had a few close calls, but you hear, you're, they usually rattle pretty good there, they hiss at you, and just get out of the way. Also, scorpions will be coming out more. Uh, we haven't had too many this year, but in years past, uh, we've had scorpions run along out here. Uh, they usually only at nighttime, you see them at nighttime. But you turn over a carpet, you'll see. So we have black lights. So sometimes when it gets, as they come out, we'll just go off the black light and we'll look around. They they really glow in the dark with their tails and bodies, so they're easy to spot. I have to admit, I kill those. <laughs> I should have brought my jar of scorpions, and we have a, 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 a few collections. And then if you do get stung by a scorpion, it's not going to kill you. It's going to hurt. It stings like a ball of fire in your hand or something. The weather gets drier and drier as insects come out. And then right about now in March, the birds fly up. Well, the birds are very migratory around here. It's kind of quiet in winter time, but right about now they'll come in. And so in the morning you're gonna be, you'll likely get, if you don't wake up by the sun, you know, the birds will wake you up because they get pretty noisy out here. And they start building nests. We have, uh, I was reported a nest being constructed in one of our light fixtures back up there. Um, it's, um, 
fill your nest in there and we'll let it do its thing, you know? And we'll lay eggs in there and we'll, we'll hatch this and we'll leave steam in the trees and around. Uh, and that's fine with us. They make a little mess on the, you know, when they spill things, but we, we'll wipe it up. Um, we do have sometimes bees. Bees will come out. Our aloe plants are um, blooming right now. They're lovely plants. And uh, hummingbirds, a lot of hummingbirds will come in and they just love the nectar. The thing I saw the other day, uh, there was a, a bird, not a hummingbird, a different kind of species, not a cactus wren, but something similar. And it was getting nectar or eating nectar. And then uh, another bird shot, and there's all of these stalks. But this one bird chased the other bird off. He wanted the same stock that, that that other bird had. I don't know what that shit was, that was about. But it, and then after it was there just for a moment, it flew away too. Hmm. Uh, but you get it, it kind of in tune with what's around you in terms of the natural world. You learn to respect it a lot more and appreciate it. And, and it hurts when you see things that um, are degrading it. We had a, a unfortunate lot here. We were sold. Most of the people that, that buy out here like to keep some of the trees and some of the shrubs. But this particular individual uh, had it scraped, denuded everything, cactus, trees, everything was denuded. And it put up a structure up there, a rancho something, you know, and it was, it, was, it was sad. And we saw the animals scurry out of there as it being bladed and scraped. For some reason, I'm not sure the details, but uh, I had a disagreement. And so decided, I'm not gonna live here. And tore down his structures he had built to introduce it to his rancho, he called it a rancho, where there wasn't a rancho, and left. So now there's this vacant lot, and of course dirt and dust blows into the neighbors' places and homes, and there's no habitat for the wildlife. So those types of behaviors I, uh, are, I find distressing for, to the community and, and to me too. So uh, if you come out here, I hope you'll have a, have respect for the land and the people. The culture is different. Uh, manana means tomorrow, maybe. We had uh, we had that experience Thursday. Uh, two of our neighbors gave me some money to pay for propane, and one was getting new solar panels. And they're our neighbors, so when they show up, they can deposit the, the, well the fuel and all, the propane and also the solar panels. Well, I got the money, but they never showed up. And so uh, that night, so when they came back, returned, I gave the money back and, and uh, we're still waiting for a propane. The neighbor didn't run a propane on uh, his big tank, so they brought a, one of the other neighbors had a five gallon tank of propane, hooked that up for a while. I went up there and relit the hot water tank. We're still waiting for a propane. Those are some of the uh, inconveniences that you have out here. Once again, neighbors will step in and help you out if you have a problem. And uh, so, uh, it's still a joy. We still love them out here regardless of the rattlesnakes and the, the manatas, manana type thing they have out here. Uh, so when do you leave? Uh, so you're here most of the year, but... Right. Last year we left August 10th. It was pretty hot by then. We had a beautiful July. Nice. People were gone. By that time, it's quiet again. Most people have left. We have uh, probably about 28 uh, homes out here. And increasing as you feel bleak here now, becoming more popular. But most people leave. It gets hot, they leave. But there are three families that stay year round. We're increasingly going that way ourselves. But we left in August, uh, came back uh, in November, it was November. Uh, this year, my wife leaves, in, like I said, in a few weeks to Oregon. Uh, whether she comes back or not, I'm not sure. We have some family issues up there she has to take care of. Her plan is to come back down here. And then eventually we drive back up. Uh, if for some reason she can't get down here, I may just fly up because I need I need wife time, and then come back down. Uh, then when we when we when we return back up there, when the weather gets gets hot, we go back up. But get back down here in October, late October would be the the, the month we would be returning. And one thing I found, uh, going back to the timeshare idea, is that a lot of people who live here do have a timeshare, especially people who live inland. They will have a timeshare on the beach so that they'll have their kind of like gorgeous weather year round living inland and be able to spend a little bit of time down on the beach a couple times a year and then return to their gorgeous weather of inland living. So that's something I had not really thought of. And we kind of had a conversation about timeshares and really 
if you have one, making sure that you get good use out of it and, you know, buying used and whatnot. But that's a topic for some other channel. So if you're thinking about a timeshare, go find a used one, find a, some YouTube videos about that. It's definitely, I think, a nice thing for people to have. It, you know, here, these guys actually will just go from their spot here down the dirt roads into San Jose del Cabo and spend a night or two. And they go in, do the shopping and things like that, and then come back the next day or two later. So it's nice their system is kind of built on points so they could be like, oh, I want one night or two nights or something like that. Or also, we talked about going to other places. There are many other places around the world that they can travel to. So these guys definitely doing a good job of making use of their timeshare plan. I found out here, we weren't the only one that had a timeshare. A lot of people out here have timeshares in Cabo or San Jose do Cabo. And so what happens now, the ladies, and they get kind of close. They love to go to, to go to the timeshare. We, they rotate out the timeshares and they get the manicures and the body massages and the facials and hair styling and nails, everything. And they have, and they have go shopping, of course, and fine dining, of course, and have a delightful time. So let's head upstairs quick to, to meet Roz before we wrap up the video. Hopefully uh, we'll find her up here. So what I want to know from Roz is Larry and Ron bought this place kind of without necessarily telling their wives. And so I want to know a little bit about what it's like. And Roz was, was still working at the time. So what it's like to transition to living out here because this is pretty remote out here. Okay, so the first two years we had this house, um, I was still working. And uh, so I would come down on vacation, which was great because it's beautiful and there's lots to do but my first year of actually living down here was a little bit of a rough adjustment because it's a it's one thing to come down on vacation it's another thing to live down here and there was a lot of cleaning a lot of at the places in rough shape a lot of work but every year has gotten better and better because it's just a it's just a different lifestyle where in the states um i could pick up some groceries on the way home from work and had my routines and here you really have to think ahead because you can't there's no store to run to if you run out of something or want something or need something you have to plan and um prepare and uh and but just living in such a beautiful place is um worth it you know you guess there's so much to be appreciate every day and yes it is gorgeous here it's like inspirational level of gorgeous um far away from things not much traffic but just like the view from their front porch essentially I mean, you can just sit out here. Um, as Larry mentioned, there were some some people who came to the Airbnb with big plans to be all athletic, and just ended up hanging out and just watching uh, watching the whales go by. Um, it is amazing. So, if you're one of those timeshare people, um, check it out. See if you might be one of those people to become a full time Mexican resident. Um, be that in a condo or be that all the way out here uh, off the grid on the East Cape of Cabo Pulmo. And check out some other videos. I've got some interviews up here with other folks who've done it too. Hasta luego.